Hi VC, this is Bev here. This is um, my contest entry that I'm going to do for uh, Ron Haggerty. Uh, it's his seven questions contest for his 700 subscribers that he's... Um, actually, I just looked at his channel and I can't see, it doesn't seem to show at the moment just exactly how many subscribers he's he's got in the usual place. So unless I'm either going blind or YouTube's updated itself or Ron's done something to his settings where it doesn't show it, I don't know. Anyway, but so he's ruined about 700 subscribers. <laughs> um, so he's running a contest and uh, it's based around the number seven. 700 subscribers, seven questions. The closing date's the 7th of July, the 7th month, the 7th day, the 7th month, etc. And so, um, I was, uh, so I've been spending an uh, hour or two just footering about with my collection and digging out the various items required to answer his questions. So, one or two of them were quite tricky. Um, and other ones I was just trying to think, well, um, I'll maybe not pick this one because someone else might or whatever. So I was trying to make it just a little bit different, but I, not completely, I did, you know, pick something from one of my favourite bands. Um, anyway, let's just get on through them. So um, we'll get started. Um, so, as I say, he's got seven questions and they're all kind of related to the number seven. So, the first question he asks is, um, show a band with the number seven <coughs> in the band's name. And if you can't show a band that has the, the number seven as part of their name, you can show a band whose name is seven letters long. And uh, for that one, uh, I, I, there was two or three, um, I had a wee bit of choice for that, but what I've actually uh, went with is I'm going to go with this band because opportunity for a quick sh uh, plug for them as well. So here is mine. I obviously don't have a band that has, well, I couldn't see a band through pretty much everything where Seven was part of their name. I mean, I can think of one. There's 24 Seven Spies. For some reason, that's the first one. To come, but there's probably others out there as well. But I'm going with this band because Osukaru, Swedish band, um, the name Osukaru has seven letters. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is my uh, <coughs> answer to uh, the first one, Seven Letters. Now this, um, I just, I'm brand new to this album myself. I listened to it for the first time yesterday. Um, it was sent as VCLT from Vinylizer, uh, and I'm absolutely thrilled to have this. Um, after my first listen yesterday, I thought this is an excellent album. Um, they sound fantastic. They <coughs> they are just so together musically, you know. Um, the vocalist, the singer, has a great sound and vocals. The guitars are brilliant. The 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 drums and the bass are solid. You know, there's there's bits of keyboard in it here and there as well, um, but not like loads of keyboards or anything. Um, and so when this uh, album, <coughs> listening to the whole thing last night after just my first listen, um, <coughs> I had listened to a couple of the tracks on YouTube, um, possibly one or one maybe from a different album. Um, this is the latest from just 2018. Um, but I really enjoyed it. Um, pretty much, more or less, all the tracks from what I can call, I think I like the whole lot. Um, I don't know, you know, um, how if there's any any of them um, 
uh, were influenced or were a follower or a fan of Def Leppard perhaps, but um, it's a song here that's ain't called Ain't Too Late For Love, which is obviously very close to Too Late For Love. Um, <clears throat> And I know as well, while I was listening to this, there's a track called All Guns Blazing. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and right away I could hear something that was familiar to me when that song kicked in. Um, <clears throat> it kicks in and the guitar is, it's like the exact, um, the melodic chorus that of... Uh, what's in Photograph, the song Photograph by Def Leppard. Um, the guitar is kind of playing that, which is the chorus of the under, you know, underneath the vocals. Um, I thought that is so awful photograph, you know, I thought that's just really definitely better. So I thought, well, Def Leppard influence in there, definitely. Um, but that was the immediate thing, I'll just show you in a, as well. So yeah, and the really good band. I also, um, they 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 got me thinking. They sound well, not like, but I would place them maybe in the same group of bands as, like, uh, Gotard, one of them, and Eclipse, Swedish band as well. Um, Gotard or Switzerland, um, and. Uh, what was the other one? Because I put it on my Facebook page last night. Uh, and just a, a touch of Pretty Maids about them as well. It's particularly with some of the vocals, I thought there was just a little bit of a, a rough edge to some of the vocals as well. But um, it just hints in the music as well um, of those type of bands. So definitely solid, melodic, traditional hard rock, um, modern sounding um just great guitar tones great leads fantastic album and um, and i do recommend i encourage more of you who are into you know that kind of stuff just melodic hard rock traditional heavy rock um to check them out they're on youtube just go and have a sample um tim line uh, likes them as well um but i was really um, impressed with this so anyway, that's some seven minutes in here, so that's enough for me to move on to my next question. But definitely Osukaru is my band name with seven letters. And House of Mirrors is a great album. So um, I think the more I listen to this as well, and I have another one of their albums to listen to, which I'm looking forward to as well. Question two for Ron. Show an album title with the number seven. Now this one I struggled with. <coughs> I went through pretty much everything. I think I went, yeah, I'm sure I'll get through just about everything anyway, but my results, um, apart from coming up with the obvious, which Ron showed as his example, seventh son of a seventh son, with the number seven in that title, the only other one I found, which I don't know, I might not be the only one to show this either, um, I have two Halloween albums, Keeper of the Seven Keys, um, parts one and two. So I'm showing part two, um, just for no particular reason than I'm showing part two. Um, I can't quite decide which of the two I prefer. I, I kind of like them both, and uh, I just don't know if I have a favourite out of the two. But yeah, there's the the word seven spelled out. Um, so yeah, and this is the. This is an original pressing, this one, this is a 1988 album, um, <coughs> which um, I, was, I was a little bit late to the part of Halloween actually, but um, I did discover them uh, a little while back um, through YouTube and to my delight um, discovered I quite like their songs, well I do like their songs, um, and so I started getting into them because back in the day, in the 80s when they kind of came out um, as one of the, the power metal pioneers. Uh, I kind of thought they would be a bit sort of too heavy sounding for me and too fast um, at the time. So as I say, I was a bit late to them. But yeah, that is my album with the number seven. I hope that counts. Um, I guess it shouldn't. <laughs> um, 
Right, so, and, uh, question three. What have I got here? I've got a note of my questions just up here. So, um, number three is show an album from a year ending in seven. So, again, you've got a whole range of albums I could have picked. And I went with one of my favourite years, 1987. Um, and I'm going to show another one of my favourite bands, actually. Um, Bonfire and Fireworks. Uh, this is their... I did think this was their debut album, but it's not. This is their second album. Um, I think their the first came out the year before, I believe, as Bonfire. Um, so this one is 1987. You probably won't be able to read that, but it does say 1987 somewhere. Um, so this is a German press. It's uh, an original press and it's got the original sticker with the German two dates for the 88 tour. Um, great album this. Um, I just love um, <clears throat> Bonfire. Um, this, this has obviously got their original singer. Um, they have changed their singer over the course of the years but the current singer is equally phenomenal in his own way. Um, but this, the guy that does the vocals on here is equally brilliant. Um, and I do recall hearing a couple of the Bonfire songs off of this album. I don't think it was 87, I heard them later, about 89-90 is when I kind of heard them, I think. Um, and I don't think I was really aware of who Bonfire were at the time. I think I just heard them on the, the radio, on the, the, the Edinburgh Rock, the, the rock and metal show that they did on a weekly thing. Um, locally, <laughs> but the two standout songs that I do recall from back it was American Nights and uh, the, the ballad Give It A Try, these were the two that stuck in my mind the most um, back in the day, but yeah, so that is my album from 1987, and also Bonfire has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters as well, so there's another <laughs> One that would have, would have also answered question one. So, and the next question, which is question four. Is that right? Yes. Band with the name, done that. Album title, yep. Album from the year ending in seven. Number four. Show an album. Sorry, I'm, I'm reading below here. Show an album with seven tracks. I was struggling a bit with this one as well, and I did come across two um, that I opted to show this one. Um, this is Diamond Heads, and it's uh, Borrowed Time, or Living on Borrowed Time. When you open it out, you get the full title there. Um, and so yeah, this... I initially thought this was a compilation, but I, yeah, I think it is actually. This album is culled from our first five or so years, so yeah, um, it is like a, a collection of some of their best hits. Does that count? I'll show the other one as well, just to make sure. But yeah, there is only seven songs. There's four inside one, which I don't know how well you can see that with the one, the glare, and two, um, just the focusing. Um, so three tracks inside. Uh, Four tracks on side one, three tracks on side two. Um, side one, In the Heat of the Night, To Heaven From Hell, Call Me and Lightning To The Nations. Side two, Borrowed Time, Don't You Ever Leave Me and Am I Evil. So um, I do like Diamond Head. It took me a while to, to get a hold of Diamond Head on vinyl. Um, so... Just to be sure though, here's my other album with seven tracks and it's Deep Purple's Machine Head. And uh, again, you've got four tracks on side one. Highway Star, Maybe I'm a Leo, Pictures of Home and Never Before. And on side two, Smoke in the Water, Lazy and Space Truffin. So, um, this was the first Deep Purple album I got myself. Um, again, they're another band that I never got into really back in the day. 
I was only aware of that are kind of super hits, you know, like, um, well, a couple of them are on here actually. Highway Star and Smoke in the Water were two of the, the ones I knew really well. Um, so oh, I got the album because um, it was cheap one day on Amazon. It was a pretty decent deal and I, I wanted to see what I thought of the whole album. So uh, yeah. <coughs> so that is my albums with seven tracks and here I've been now. Uh, number five. Talk about a seven minute song you love. Well... <laughs> there was quite a few, and I settled on this one. This is from an, another favourite band of mine. Um, and it, uh, it's from The Number of the Beast. And it's the last track. You'll know what it is, probably. Hallowed Be Thy Name. I love that song. And according to this, it is 7 minutes and 10 seconds long. Um, so yeah, um, I, it's one of my favourite Iron Maiden songs, I think it's probably a favourite of most people, um, they always use it as their, one of their encores these days, but yeah, 7 minutes and 10 seconds of goodness, um, and incidentally I love, I love hearing it live as well, um, this is my most familiar, because this, this is the, the live album of Maiden that I've had the longest, so I'm most familiar with the version on here as well. And um, again, it's the final track on this disc too. You probably won't be able to read that too well, but um, the live version here clocks in at 7 minutes 52 seconds, so it still fits into your time frame, Ron. Um, but what... What, I just love everything about it. It's such an atmospheric song um, and when you hear it live as well, Iron Maiden are one of these bands where they have some of their songs I almost prefer hearing live than the, the album version. Um, there are one or two songs a, a bit like that with Def Leppard as well, which I specifically from Pyromania, I think. Um, I, there's a lot of those songs I would much prefer the live version um, for some reason, but I still obviously love the studio versions, but there's just something about the live versions. But yeah, um, I love hearing this live, How Would Be Thy Name. Um, I love the intro. What do I love about it? I love... Um, yeah, the, the title of the song, Hallowed Be Thy Name, you know, it's, it takes a line from the Lord's Prayer. It's just uh, pretty cool in itself. Um, Hallowed Be Thy Name, yeah. And um, the introduction, it starts off very slow and kind of melancholy. It's like the, the lyrics are, um, the boy's sitting here um contemplating these last few moments of life kind of thing. Um, so there's the lyrics um, and then there's the riffs when the song gets going and, uh, and it just builds it's kind of, and the energy builds with the song um, and then you've got the, the leads, you know, there's the lead guitar part and then you've got the, the dual guitars <coughs> Or the triple axe and the triple guitar assault as it is nowadays live and um, but you know you've got the guitar harmonies and everything and the, this the whole feelings that that song produces for me it's a, i get this just a feeling that uh, you feel the hair rising on the back of your neck kind of thing um it's just one of these songs that is really really special to me, you know. Um, so that is my seven minute song that I just adore. Um, so the next question, the sixth question is show the seventh album in a band's catalogue. Again, I've, I could have picked uh, two or three, um, but I decided to go with this one actually. Um, so I thought it would be kind of a wee bit different and cool as well. Um, so this is the seventh studio album from Accept. 
uh, Russian Roulette. There's a layer everywhere. Um, now this was my introduction to Accept. This is the first album of those I laid my hands on, Russian Roulette. Um, it was originally uh, released in 1986. Um, and I believe this was the last album as well that Accept uh, did with uh, Udo Dirk Schneider as the, the, vo the lead, the vocalist. Um, because after this album, I think he left and went on to launch his own band, UDO. Um, but I, again, this is another band I was late, completely late to the party on because back in the day, I thought, again, Accept like Halloween would be too heavy for me and I, I kind of thought they were more on the thrash side to be honest. I thought they were kind of like one one of the sort of thrashy style German bands um, but how wrong can you be actually um, because it was one day I um, just was browsing YouTube and I clicked on the actual song Russian Roulette to be honest with you um, the title track on this and um, I, I liked what I was hearing. I thought, wait, this isn't thrash. No way is this thrash. This is just... And it's actually just more kind of like traditional heavy metal. Um, a little bit of the power element in it, you know, it's, it's very solid German um, metal and certainly Udo Dirk Schneider has a distinctive voice actually. Um, so, uh, but yeah, and so I found this uh, on eBay. Um, this is actually a French pressing. It's a, a reissue from 1996 on uh, Melody or uh, Mel Melody Distribution Antisocial label or something. Um, so that is how that one looks. But I really enjoy this album. I don't know if it's everybody's favourite except or if it's one of the one of the so-called best albums, but I like this. Um, I was reading something briefly about Accept and I think Wolf Hoffman at the time commented on how they didn't like the polished commercial sort of sound that Metal Heart had, which was the predecessor to this, so they produced this themselves and wanted to go back to their sort of original sound a little bit um, but I, I don't have um, the earliest album of theirs I have is uh, Restless and Wild <laughs> is the uh, earliest Accept album I have so I don't have anything before that um, so I don't know what they were like at the very start yet, but um, I just like this. I mean, TV War, Monster Man, Russian Roulette, um, Heaven is Hell, the, the last track, Stand Tight, um, just quite like all of them actually. They're pretty, I think this is a really good album, I enjoy this a lot. So, um, so that is my seventh studio album from a band, except. Last but not least, Share, uh, question seven, share one thing you like about my channel. Well, I, I've been subscribed to Ron for the most part of my year that I've just celebrated in the BBC. Um, I discovered Ron's channel very early on. He was one of the, one of the first that I, I started um, watching. Um, I heard other people um, mention them in their videos and I would see he would comment on some of them at times as well so I went and checked him out and obviously discovered he's into a lot of hard rock metal a lot of thrash and doomy kind of stuff he likes as well he likes a bit a lot of the heavier stuff that I don't like but um, he also likes a lot of the uh, melodic um, hard rock and uh, a little bit of the like Michael Glam or hair stuff and um, the lighter side of it. Um, he likes a lot of Christian rock and metal. Um, he is a Christian, so as far as I'm concerned, he's he's, he's generally you know rock and metal, um, 
same kind of music um, overall in general. So we can we connect it that way. He loves Iron Maiden. He loves Overkill. That's I think his favourite band of all time. Um, but Iron Maiden's Seventh Son is his favourite album of all time. And I know it's it's my favourite Iron Maiden album. I just don't know if it's my actual favourite album of all time. Um, I don't know that I could just pick one album to to be favourite over everything else. There's too many good albums. I kind of find that difficult sometimes. But but what I uh, like about Ron's channel is is the host, Ron. You are what makes your channel interesting and you're a very clear uh, speaker. You, you know, when you're talking and uh, explaining about things, you're clear and you know, you don't talk in riddles or anything like that, and, and you're just quite funny at times as well, as most people. They all have their own quirks and character and personality. Um, but I just think you're a really genuine guy, and you've got a nice family. Occasionally uh, your daughters will show up in the videos. Um, and that's really it. I do think that uh, when you watch Ron Haggerty's channel, um, your host, um, he makes it what it is, he just, it's just, you know, Ron makes it his own kind of thing, it's his feel, so, so that's that really, and uh, he basically just likes to say what he likes to say, and that's, that's that. Um, I hope that's, <laughs> I hope that's okay. Um, and so that's my entry to the contest, Ron, and Congratulations on reaching 700 subscribers, um, it's well deserved. You've covered a range of stuff in your videos. You have been in the the vinyl or the music community for quite a while, I believe. Um, I'm not sure how long exactly, but maybe at least four years. That was way before I knew the vinyl community existed. Um, so, um, but yeah, congratulations, and we hope to keep seeing lots more good videos from you. Um, and I'll sign off, because this is getting very long. <laughs> and uh, bye for now. Thanks for watching.